Hi there, Marilla Mack here. Thank you so much for clicking onto my video. If this is your first time seeing me, hi there, welcome. I'm Marilla. Um, welcome to Vlogtober. I'm a day behind. Today's uh, the 3rd of October, but it's only episode 2. So bear with us. <laughs> if you're a returning subscriber, I just woke up. I'm sorry. It's like a little bit after 7. And I wanted to share with you, like my returning subscribers would know, I generally am up by five or six, but I've recently come back to doing midnight prayers. Um, but after midnight prayers, you do not immediately pass out. I ended up sleeping at two. So now my goal time to wake up is like quarter past seven, seven quarter past seven, so that I'm a normal person. Um, I'm up at seven and then do Bible reading and then take Athena to school. Unfortunately today, I woke up at like 7.30, so I don't have much time for Bible reading. I have to take Athena to school, then come back, and then I can do the rest of the things I need to do for the day. All right, let me get going. Uh, so I'm all dressed. I'm wearing this um, simple black dress. It's just, but like my bra keeps peeping out, so I'm like, ah, okay. I don't want the hassle of changing bras. And then, so I'm just gonna wear this kimono. I think this kimono is from my sister. She she gave it to me when I was pregnant because she's just like, girl, <laughs> he can cover up. <laughs> it was so crazy. So yes, I still love, I love this kimono. It's got pockets. You know, a girl loves herself a good, you know, set of pockets. Love, love, love. I took Athena to school. Unfortunately, I couldn't vlog the school run because my phone had to upload episode one of vlogtober now the thing is when you're uploading to youtube like vlogging is fun editing is fun and challenging um uploading it to youtube for you guys to see is the part you cannot control in terms of how long it'll take to upload depending on the size of your file you know which is determined by the length and the quality and all of those other things on average, most of my videos take up to two, between two to three hours to upload. And it doesn't mean like once you put it, it, it abides by that time. It can lengthen, it can shorten, depending on, you know, Wi-Fi and everything. And then if your phone locks or if your machine locks, it can actually pause the outlo uh, upload or stop it altogether. And like last night, I slept at two and it said left with 30 minutes, like, of the two hours, 30 minutes left. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll make sure my phone doesn't lock. I removed auto lock, everything. And I was like, okay, I'll sleep. By the time I wake up, it's uploaded. Did I not wake up and it said 30 minutes to go? <laughs> if you wake up five, six hours later and it still says 30 minutes, delete your video and start over. I started over twice last night and two times today. Episode one only uploaded today at 8.30 in the morning. It was meant to upload at 1 a.m. so that I can like get it out and do something else. It didn't. So I'd start the two hours again this morning. So I had to leave my phone and I couldn't vlog school run with you today. But I will take you guys tomorrow. I think for me, that's the most challenging part about YouTube, that, that upload quality and everything. I do have a laptop. I have not learned to edit on my laptop. I need to learn how to use After Effects. My husband has put all the software. I just haven't taken the time to like learn how to do it. Maybe it may be faster if I use my actual laptop to upload. But yeah, for now, we're just going through this. Anyways, I went to Spa Kensington to get myself a croissant um, and Athena a jam donut. She's never had a donut. I realized that. So I thought, oh, let me just put something different in your lunch pack. Got her a jam donut. I don't know if she's going to like it. I'll find out from the school. And then I got myself a croissant. That was like 60 cents. You know, croissant and coffee to be nice in the morning. So, yeah, that's what I got myself. I'm craving it. My mouth is watering just talking about this croissant. Let me go she get this now. cars down on the table Knowing there's no way that you'll be able To win this one but she's somebody else in the making first she just gotta stop all the faking and she'll be there but 
<laughs> it's a cup of coffee, another cup of coffee. Okay, I need to take these two to the kitchen and clean them. Oh, yesterday I got a brownie, a chocolate brownie from Salt. Guys, it's so good. It's dense. No, it's like death by chocolate. I think I've like half left. This is my husband. Um, I have half left uh, from yesterday. drinking my coffee enjoying myself and I'm about to start like working and I feel compelled like no I can't just like continue like this without um, you know reading my Bible and sharing with you you know um, of late God has just put this thing on me and I know it's like upon every Christian but I feel the weight right now where God is saying put me first in everything that you're doing in your family in your life in your social everything that you do put me first so as i'm drinking my coffee i feel the holy spirit go are you about to just continue with your day are you about to just continue vlogging and not put god first and i'm like no sir i'm sorry my bad so the verse i want to share is one that we all know which is psalms 23 so last night pastor batsi during midnight prayers um was praying using this verse i didn't pray the previous night so i don't know what the theme necessarily was but i just joined the midnight prayers and he read out psalms 23 right for those of you who may not know it let's read the bibles psalms 23 reads the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You repair a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So Psalms 23 is something we grew up, you know, being taught. We could sing it. You know, we know it. That's why it's not even highlighted in my Bible, because... It's in my heart, like I know it. Then um, the pastor went on to share 1 Samuel chapter 16. So he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. At this point, uh, Samuel is called to anoint a king, right? Uh, one of Jesse's sons. But Samuel doesn't know which son is going to be anointed. And then he asks Jesse, and Jesse, obviously, you know, Kafun's got something that's like, who's the next king? You think of your children in hierarchy, strength, wisdom, all of that. He lines up all his sons. And the Lord says, no, nope, not that one, not that one, none of them. And Samuel is like, oh, okay. Um, to Jesse, do you have another? You know, and Jesse hadn't even thought of David. He was like, oh, that one, like the young one, like, oh, okay, I guess maybe him. And David enters and the Lord says to Samuel, anoint him. So as the pastor was praying, I got the revelation before, you know, like when pastors read you like five chapters, then they link them together. The Holy Spirit gave me the revelation, like, boom, do you see what's happening here? for me most people may know this i didn't and i'm sharing this with you i did not understand that psalms 23 was basically what david had gone through with the lord it's actually his relationship with the lord every verse is not a wish it's actually what he's been through with the lord the lord is my shepherd remember he was a shepherd he used to take care of the sheep he he says he lets me lie down in green pastures he actually had this experience you know he leads me beside still in quiet waters he was walking with god and this is him writing you know this is in psalms 23 like it could have been psalms 1 you know but this is after a lot of things have happened and he is remembering what god has brought him through there was no promise that he was going to be king 
all right? He's remembering his relationship with God like, oh my God, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you with me. He had been through that, the lion, the bear, you know, he'd been through it. Your rod protects me, your staff guides me, they comfort me. He had this experience. I found it so beautiful because I was like, oh, wow. And then the connection between the verses where he says, you've anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Remember, he was anointed in the presence of his enemies, his brothers. They didn't like him much. They didn't. Okay. They were not supportive. Nah, not really. Even his father was like, meh, my son. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my and refreshed my head with oil. And as I was praying, I asked God, what does oil represent? Why, what, like, what's the deal, you know? Why oil? And as I was praying, I quickly just Googled and I saw prosperity, right? And I was like, okay, you've anointed and refreshed my head with oil, prosperity, okay. And then I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a very curious Christian. I'm a very curious child of God. And I said, why don't they put oil in the hands? You know, like prosperity in the hands. I'm like, on the head. It starts in the mind. It's, it's a mindset. You have to start here. And because you've been anointed with prosperity, it does not mean tomorrow morning you're sitting in the palace. It's the beginning. I was like, wow. Okay, you know, the revelation that Pastor Bati shared yesterday was that in the midst of your problems, the Lord is going to set a table for you. Because, you know, I, you know, when they say in the presence of your enemies, some people have known enemies, family members, friends, you know, co-workers, whatever. I don't want to lie to you. If you're my enemy, I don't know you. I don't. I'm not aware of you. You're doing a good job of hiding. I don't know you. If you don't like me, I don't know you. It doesn't bother me. I'm not looking for you. You know, we can keep this relationship up where you just stay there and I stay here. I cannot think, you know when they say your enemies, some people can think of people. I cannot think of anyone. I can't, maybe it's just innocence. I don't know what it is or foolishness. I don't know. But I cannot think of uh, in the presence of my enemies, he sets a table. I can't even put people who will be there as enemies. I cannot, I don't have that. However, I then said to God, in the midst of my problems, in the midst of negative thoughts, in the midst of bad things happening, the Lord sets a table before me in the presence of my problems. It, it, not waiting for the problems to go away. The Lord is going to bless me in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of hard times. And I said, amen. I, I agreed with that. Then he says, you have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. Guys, this I couldn't let go of this oil. I was like, the oil is put on the head. Our mindsets, our mindsets. You know when Samuel um, anointed him as king, he could have just said, my nigga, you the king. Yeah, yeah. Dub, dub, buy, go, do your thing. He had to anoint him. And it's, it's on the head. I, I'm still doing a little more research, you know, when I did my research, like right now, it says in scripture, oil symbolizes wealth, abundance, health, energy, and a vital ingredient for a good life, right? Spiritual abundance. I said, Lord, this oil, it's anointed on the head. It all starts in our minds. It all starts with our mindsets, it starts here. And then it works its way outward from your mind. We have to actually have the exercise of changing our mindsets. Your mouth says, I'm blessed. And then your brain says, mm, how? Problem, mindset. Your mouth says, I want to travel. Your mind says, your mindset says, ah, our family doesn't do that. Your mouth says, I want to get married. Your mindset says, but there's no good man. Anoints your head with oil. He sets a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Your mindset can be changed in the midst of your troubles. It, you are in the pit. Things are going bad. Like, jo like Joseph, he was in prison. Things were not looking good. But his mindset, his mindset, we can see the results of his mindset because look where he ended up. You know, oh, guys, this, this word was just fire for me. 
I pray it's encouraging to you. Um, I love Bible studies with the Holy Spirit. I love it. The word just comes alive and connecting it with other teachings. I just don't read the Bible by myself and pray. No, I read, pray, listen to a preacher. I put things together to like, because I'm trying to find, like I'm seeing God in so many different ways. It's just so good. Okay. Ah, thank you, Jesus. I've shared the best I could. I know it was a bit haphazard, but I pray, I pray, I pray. The Lord has done his work. My croissant is still in half. My coffee's cooled down, but it's okay. I can continue now. All right, I have changed. I've put on some eyeliner and some mascara. Eyeliner and mascara does wonders for me. I love it. Like, my face actually changes. I have to drive out uh, now. Going to meet up ooh, with someone just to collect a little something. Something, something. Um, remember what Sekuru was working on yesterday in the garden? I just wanted to show you guys how it's looking. I've got my bucket of water to water the flowers before I leave. So this is what he's done. I'm really happy. I'm super, super happy. Okay. Did he plant them well? They're looking a little shallow. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> I'll come back and do a little more. A little water has helped. I'm concerned about this one. It's looking a little shallow. It needs to go a little deeper. Okay. Weather has changed like drastically. It was very hot and now it's, it's like a little chilly. Guys, so I've made it to where I'm going. I'm meeting my friend. She runs the RK station, both of them on Borodal Road. So corner Borodal and Churchill, and then Borodal and something, I forgot what it's called, but where there's the new KFC um, towards Sam Levy. So it's looking beautiful, so lovely. Super proud of the work they're doing. Okay, so I'm done with my meeting and you guys will not believe it. We have been given uh, tickets to the Jacaranda Fest VIP. Guys, like, we had no plans. And I'm like, oh wait, is no, a VVIP ticket. And we are so excited. My husband and I have not had time together. We haven't had time to like go out or plan these things and this is a blessing, a huge blessing, and I'm, I'm extremely grateful. I'm, I don't even know how to thank God. But now I have to rush back home and work. I've had a great chat. Guys, if you bump into me, you always see me talking. But I don't talk nonsense. I try to speak edifying words, you know. I try to be encouraging. Drive safely. You'll find me talking. I just try to speak sense <laughs> as well Bye. I try speak sense a lot so hey God God is good surrounding me with people that speak well speak life we thank God for them I'm so grateful all right let me get home I am home now. I'm in the process of selling um, Athena's camp cot. That's why it's out. This is like the previous one she had before the bigger main one. Ah, she was now bumping her head and that always wakes them up. If you find your baby, um, like the, you have a standard camp cot and they just keep waking up throughout the night and then they find more comfort in your bed. Outside of the fact that you're comfortable and cozy, they need like space to do helicopter moves. <laughs> so just you can just get a, a bigger cam cart. So we had to put this one on pause. Um, I thought I was going to donate this one, but I actually have to sell it like fast. So yeah, um, someone is interested. They might be coming through to get it. 
My husband asked for leftovers from last night. What did we have last night? Sadza. Do I have leftovers? Sa? No. So I made him a little pot. A little pot of sa. So now let me dish for him. Yeah. Mm -mm. So I've given my husband a sadza. Praise God. All done. Now, with the mud timber and veggies that were left over, I didn't feel like having sadza. It's just, I haven't actually eaten anything properly, if you guys think of it. Coffee, half a croissant. My husband had the rest of it. Oh, I have a brownie, half a brownie that I'll have. But I'm not hungry. I don't know. I'm supposed to be starting a fast, a 21-day fast, starting tomorrow. Um, like from 6 to 6. And I feel like my body is preparing me for that like i have no appetite yesterday i struggled to eat that t-bone i think we got to the salt restaurant around 12 yeah a little bit after 12 we left around 3 30. i only finished eating at three the food came to us around 1 30 or so it took me forever i'm a fast eater i was just going little and then wait little that i was like what's happening my stomach no appetite and so right now i've just made a sandwich chingua matemba the veggies chili and tomato i just that's what i feel like no i'm not pregnant don't start with me <laughs> i'd like to be hey i'd like to be but right now no there's no baby right now not yet that's what i feel like having and some juice i don't know do you guys do that like just have a weird sandwich that just has things inside i don't know anyways let me sit down eat i want to take a nap before athena comes home i didn't sleep too well so i think i will take a nap i'm gonna eat fast take a nap we go get athena and then we figure out the rest of the evening I'm taking my nap now i have about 45 minutes to an hour and then i have to go get athena from school yeah i think i'm mentally exhausted just a little stressed out just a little giving it to god and allowing my body to rest. I can feel it. So yeah. I just have 45 minutes for a power nap. And then we continue. I tried to nap. I did. I was so dedicated. I did for about 30 minutes. And then I got a phone call, and then a phone call, and then a phone call. <laughs> and I am laughing. I'm like, it's okay, Lord. You're going to give me the energy to go through. You, you actually have to gear up for your toddler. You know, you just don't... Like, babies are fine. Like, none walking. The crawling ones. Crawling and before. No problem. They stay in one place. My running, moving, climbing... <laughs> adventurous daughter i have to gear up for her you actually have to look around the room and like think like a toddler what would she touch is that dangerous hmm what would she what would she randomly just put in her mouth that could not be good for you you have to think ahead because these people are fast i'm just going to take a moment to just like breathe before i start the car and go get my daughter. I don't even know what I'm cooking for dinner. My way, Jungle. Hey, loves. So, I think I'm going to end the vlog here. This will give me enough time to edit and publish it in time. Uh, then we can prep for tomorrow. Please do like, share, subscribe. I'll truly appreciate it. This Vlogtober is exciting. It's a challenge. I've never done it before. Um vlogging every day editing and posting it's super exciting um yeah challenges are for growth anyways guys i'll catch you tomorrow i love you with the love of god